Hello students, in today's class we are going to learn about the basic design of a fermenter and batch and continuous fermentation process. So here we have a diagrammatic uh, representation of a basic design of a fermenter and we have these different parts of the uh, fermenter uh, that are explained. So first of all, impeller or an agitator. So here we can see an impeller which consists of a central shaft to which are the impeller blades attached and at one end it is attached to a motor. So the motor basically rotates and as a result of which the impeller blades will rotate uh, and that will allow the main uh, function of the impeller along with its blades is to allow proper mixing of the nutrients and also oxygen to be mixed properly in the entire uh, medium so that all the organisms will get oxygen and nutrients. Then uh, second part is a sparger or an aerator. So sparger is basically an air inlet uh, that uh, allows introduction of sterile oxygen into the fermentation uh, unit. And this will uh, provide the required oxygen for the uh, aerobic fermentation processes. Thirdly, we have baffles or vortex breakers. So these structures over here are baffles. They are also known as uh, vortex breakers. So because of uh, the continuous movement of the impellers, uh, it creates a vortex-like effect and that has to be broken. Otherwise, the media will keep uh, rising from the uh, uh, sides of the fermentation vessel. So it is important that uh, the vortex effect is broken, which is done with the help of the uh, baffles, which are basically a metal blade like structures that are attached onto the fermenter wall. Then we have an inlet air filter. So, uh, here is the inlet air filter. So whatever air is entering into the fermenter through the sparger, it needs to be sterile. So for which uh, uh, a filter is attached, so that uh, the air can be filtered and sterile filtered air will enter inside the fermenter. Then we have an exhaust air filter. This is important, especially if the fermentation is uh, for a certain pathogenic microorganisms or uh, some other things that we do not want to contaminate the environment. So whatever air is uh, being removed out of the fermenter, that also needs to be filtered. Then uh, we have a rotameter. So rotameter basically measures uh, the flow rate of air or liquid that is entering or exiting uh, from the fermenter. Then we have a pressure gauge. So that will measure what is the pressure inside the fermenter. Uh, we have a temperature probe. So temperature probe or we will generally uh, record what is the temperature of the fermentation reaction. And uh, if required, uh, it has a, basically a sensor that will record the temperature and it also has an uh, effector. So if uh, uh, you have set a temperature to uh, you know, lower temperature and um, uh, because of the continuous fermentation process, generally the uh, reaction heats up. So uh, many a times a cooling reaction is required here. So uh, uh, the uh, the cooling reaction is with the help of a cooling jacket and uh, this is basically enveloping the entire uh, fermentation vessel and uh, cold water is uh, being circulated in the jacket and there is an inlet for a cold water and there is an outlet for um, uh, uh, removing the water. So in this way cold water is circulated in the jacket and that will ensure if the temperature increases the temperature will be lower down. So cooling jacket we have just discussed. pH probe, uh, these are these different kinds of attachments that are present uh, onto, uh, on the fermenter like pH probe that will measure the pH, dissolve oxygen, uh, oxygen probe will measure oxygen, uh, level probe will measure what is the height of the fermenter, uh, uh, like the liquid in the fermenter uh, from, uh, that is to be measured. So a level probe is uh, present. So it's, the uh, uh, level is more than prescribed, then through the outlet, some amount of medium is removed. Then a foam probe. 
so because of the vortex effect many a times foam is uh, being uh, formed and that is detected with the help of a foam probe uh, so uh, anti foaming agents are added into the fermenter if there is uh, excessive foam this can block uh, various uh, walls or pipes that are attached onto the fermenter so it is important to <coughs> add an anti foaming agent then we have a sampling point this is to uh, intermittently remove the a uh, little bit amount of sample if you want to analyze a, a, a fermentation reaction at any stage you can sample from the sampling point this is like a small tube that is attached uh, through which you can uh, carefully remove the sample in a sterile way then you have these different walls which are regulated uh, they can be for liquids or gases such as if the ph increases or decreases that needs to be adjusted so addition of acids or bases or uh, so there are these different walls that are attached onto the fermenter so this is about the basic uh, design of a fermenter different parts of the fermenter uh, next slide discusses about batch culture so the fermentation process is basically carried out either in a batch culture or in a continuous culture so batch culture is basically a fermentation process which is carried out in a closed fermenter or in a closed vessel where there is no continuous exchange of uh, gases or nutrients that are taking place except for venting out of the gases okay so the microorganisms and the nutrients are all uh, added into the fermentation vessel for a set period of time uh, during which time the microorganisms will grow and use the nutrients that are available and eventually there will be uh, depletion of the nutrients so the advantages of batch culture is basically that the fermenter can be used for different types of reactions for, for example sometimes you want to do uh, fermentation for making ethanol sometimes you want to do fermentation for some other purpose so these different uh, uh, experiments or reactions can be done by making use of a batch culture method a disadvantage is that every time when you are running a fermenter one particular reaction you are running at the end of the um, a reaction there is a ideal time wherein you need to uh, clean the equipment you need to again sterilize the equipment and then uh, you need to start a fresh reaction so there is a, a lot of ideal time or a time waste in between so uh, that results in a slightly higher cost then uh, continuous culture or continuous fermentation process is carried out in an uh, open fermenter where nutrients are added continuously and the product is removed continuously at a steady rate throughout the fermentation process so uh, this is why it is known as a continuous reaction where there is no ideal time and this uh, reduces the labor cost and uh, eventually increases the productivity a disadvantages of continuous culture method is that there is a higher risk of contamination uh, because constantly you are adding some nutrient constantly you are uh, removing something so there is quite a lot of you know again and again opening of the uh, uh, you know, of the walls for adding or removing the uh, media so uh, there are chances of uh, adding contaminants from the atmosphere if the process is not done carefully so that is one disadvantage and uh, uh, continuous fermentation is feasible only when inoculated cells are genetically stable so uh, they are basically carrying out the process for a long period of time so uh, it is possible that the cells because they are growing continuously dividing continuously they can uh, change or mutate so this is process is more applicable in case of those strains that are uh, quite genetically stable and they are not uh, changing much because of uh, cell division so that is about continuous culture thank you very much i hope you like the contents kindly like share and subscribe so that you can have uh, direct access to the uploaded content thank you